Well, we've grown out, we've nitty bong. I'm Engineer Hoist, and welcome to our Wednesday stream where we talk about Transformers Earth Wars news. And also, today we've got some new toys to talk about. They were, uh, we've got leading up to New York Comic Con, I think is what it is, and uh, we've got a few. They're, they're renders, they're not actual pictures, but we got some new figures from the follow-up to the Transformers Siege line to talk about. You probably saw a few of those on the thumbnail, uh, but we'll get to those in a minute. We'll get to the Transformers Earth Wars news first, but before even that, we're going to go and talk. give shout-outs to everybody who's joining in. Uh, we've got Big Bronze Rims here, Daniel Miller, Super Prime Games, Woody, Optimus Prime, Shark Z, Peter Atwood, Logan, uh corin uh big d and g1 bumblebee was here old star star screen wreck and rule was here way early i'm sure he'll be back here uh once we get started and um so if it's your first time here uh, um and you haven't subscribed consider subscribing to the channel and when you click that bell icon make sure you click all for notifications because it's that's not the default and sometimes you might miss out on notifications that's been a problem lately with people on YouTube and on this channel and stuff like that. Or leave it as occasional if you don't want to be notified every time I go live or post a video or whatever. It's totally up to you. Uh, <laughs> so, anyway, let's get to the Transformers Earth Wars news, shall we? This weekend's event is called Calm Waters. I have no idea if that has any clue to the next bots that are going to be coming, but this is the beginning of a saga. We uh, obviously just got some new bots in Punch and Counter Punch uh, very recently, not this past weekend, but the weekend before. So it's time to start building up to the next set of bots. We'll probably find out who those are next week, but uh, there's no clue to them this week unless Calm Waters is uh, a clue. Daniel Miller, welcome. Thank you for the subscription, and uh, we'll, we'll see you here uh, next week and every other week, I guess, maybe. All right, so take part in this weekend's event to win up to 60,000 Spark, 4,000 Premium Crystal Shards, 1,600 three-star shards, and 800 four-star shards, and up to 15 Mark III Shark Decon boosters. So not the most exciting of uh, rewards, although the 60,000 Spark is uh, pretty nice. Plus, also, those uh, shards can be very useful because they do build up over time. And I am, uh, if you saw my most recent uh, Streetwise Crystal Cracking video, I'm this close to another 4 stars, so those 4 star shards will definitely be helpful to get a new 4 star crystal. Oh, and uh, another thing, I did have not cracked that G-Metal Power Core chip, so we'll be doing that here uh, shortly. Uh, so this weekend is, is an Alliance event. It's an Alliance Totalizer. Starts and ends at the usual Friday in Monday start and stop times. It's one big long list of prizes, no prestiges, and triple XP. How do you participate? Well, as with all Alliance events, you have to be in an Alliance, obviously, but you also have to be Headquarters Level 4 so you can join an Alliance, and then you hit that yellow event button like you see in your screen now for the raids. It'll be in the same place for this weekend's event. Select your battle zone, win the battle gather points, and collect your prizes. The event battle zones are the standard battle zones. And here is a summary of all of the prizes. And so the most amount of points is 500,000. So you have to hit that to collect all of the four star shards. And then, you know, basically, uh, yeah, the Alliance has to hit the 415,000 to collect all of anything. So, but there are multiple different levels all the way up through. The 500,000 where you're going to earn prizes. Don't think that you have to get to 415,000 before you get anything. That's just if you want to get all of it. So there you go. Lots of prizes all throughout the uh, the uh, totalizer. It's right there on the screen. Uh, another event, which is pretty cool. They've done this uh, once or twice before. It's a community event. Basically, uh, well, I guess I'll just read it to you. Starting uh, Monday the 7th through Friday the 11th, uh, basically in between events, they'll add together all the Energon spent to upgrade power cores, including all types of power cores, including Prime power cores, G-Metal power cores, Squad power cores, whatever. If it's a power core and you're upgrading it in the power core lab, the Energon you spend on it counts towards this event. 
and every day about 10 o'clock universal time which is about the time that they start the events so it's 6 a.m usually eastern time and stuff like that so about the time that the events usually start on fridays that's that's the 10 a.m universal time uh, they'll post uh, loot links on the social media channels, Twitter and Facebook. If you haven't subscribed to them or followed them, go do that. Uh, it's Transformers Earth Wars. It's, it's pretty easy to find. Um, let's see. Uh, on Twitter, it's at Transformers War. So if you actually, if you go to my Twitter, um, I just recently posted a tweet with a link to their Twitter account so you can uh, subscribe there. Um, but yeah, they'll be posting the standings and uh, loot codes for all the prizes. What are the prizes, you ask? Here, here you go. And if you got the newsletter, you will have seen this because I totally just took this from the newsletter, but it's okay. I have permission. Uh, so basically, you know, level one is one billion energon. But don't worry about that because that is from everybody in the game. Literally anybody spending energon counts towards this level. And I think last time we did this, we were done with the whole thing in like two and a half days. The, the, the entire Transformers Earth Wars game playing community. And you get, if we do this, we win Prime Core Shards, Premium Shards, and Spark. So to the uh, maximum level of 10 billion Energon spent. And so we would collect all of this. Uh, you know, I should have probably counted this up. So that's 750, that's 1,500, 16, well, 1,650 Prime Core Shards. So if you're running, if you're this close to another Prime Core, or if you've got the Prime Cores and you want to spend them on G Metal Cores, there's a good chance to be getting some uh, Prime Core Shards. Also some Premium Shards, so that's what, three, uh, one, two, that's, like, that's like three Premium Crystals, about 3,000 Shards, plus a lot of Spark. So this is a pretty good event. I like when they do this because uh, everybody gets to go and... Uh, uh, participate so if you're thinking of leveling your power cores hold off wait until um, Monday it's actually gonna be this coming Monday starting after the event is when this community event is start is going to start so hold off on leveling your power cores save that energy on starting Monday go crazy level up your power cores and help contribute towards this event and that's it for the Transformers Earth Wars news, other than to say they are streaming tomorrow, so check out the Transformers Earth Wars YouTube and Twitch and Facebook uh, social media channels. Uh, Facebook would be a good place to do it, because if you go over there, you could watch the stream, plus also you can follow them on Facebook, and you'll be able to get those links for those uh, loot codes or, or whatever. So, uh, William Wilkins is asking what base level you have to be. If you're talking about for that community event, it's literally anybody. Every, anybody in the game, if you... if you, uh, buy, Oh, I guess you do have to be a certain level for power to, to unlock the power cores. Was it head, uh, level 6? It's been a while. I think you have to be like headquarters level 6 or 8 to unlock the power core lab to be able to help contribute to it. But as far as I know, everybody in the game will still be able to take advantage of the loot links. Even if you're a lower level base and can't contribute to it, you should still be able to uh, claim the loot links. So uh, definitely go and do that. Red Alert, good to see you, man. Uh, how's those overnights been treating you? Hopefully, uh, you, I think you said you were those were getting done pretty soon. Uh, let's see. Okay. Here, here's the uh, fun time. Uh, uh, M-O-S-T-F-E-W says Headquarters 6 for Power Cores. Okay, thank you. Uh, headquarters 8, I think, is the Factions feature. So it's, it's been, been, a, been a little while since uh, I've hit those levels. Um, but, but yeah, so Headquarters 6 unlocks the ability to use Power Cores. Headquarters 8 unlocks Factions, where if you're an Autobot, you can play as Decepticons or vice versa. And um, trying, to talk, trying to join non-toxic gamers, uh, I think we're full at the moment. Uh, we are indeed full right now, so even if you're searching for non-toxic gamers, you're not going to find it in the search because full alliances don't show up in the, in the search. Back to normal this week? Oh, good. Oh, not sure about next week. Oh, that's the worst is when you have to flip-flop between the two. Man, I feel, I feel for you, man. I've been there. Uh, yeah, okay, so new toys. Uh, so Hasbro released these through IGN dot uh, com I think it was it's what what one of the websites out there that, that reports on this type of stuff and so um, I, I got I got the pictures from them and the new line this is the new line siege is ending 
it's still War for Cybertron Trilogy. We had Siege, and then something, and then something. We didn't know what those two somethings were. Well, the second something is Earthrise. And the way I've seen it is just like it is, spelled all in one word, Earthrise. Now, I don't know if that was intentional or if it was a typo and sp actually supposed to be Earth, Space, Rise. Uh, but I'm going with the way it was spelled, and that's what everybody else seems to be going with right now, too. And, you know, kind of, you know that's fine. I mean, it, it could be whatever they want. Earthrise. And, and, you know, if you think about it, it's kind of like if, if you think about it, you have Sunrise. And this is probably where, where they get the name from. You know, it, it, in the morning, the sun comes up, and they, they call that Sunrise. It's kind of smushed together. Uh, in the evening time, when the moon is coming out, they call that a Moonrise. So imagine if you're, uh, uh, you know, like the astronauts who went to the moon, uh, were able to actually see this. They were on the moon, and then as the moon was rotating, at some point, the Earth actually would come up, and that was Earthrise. And that's probably, uh, just now occurred to me, just now, that's where it's coming from. So Earthrise, all one word. You got that? Uh, I'm not sure if I do yet. But uh, yeah, so Earthrise is the new line. Okay, stop blabbering about the name against to the toys. Okay, first thing up is Big Daddy. Oh, well, I'm sorry. It's Daddy-O. Uh, apparently, uh, the uh, toy <laughs> this is a MicroMaster, one of two MicroMasters they revealed. And this was a figure from back a little ways. I want to say, like, from, what, maybe the Energon trilogy or something like that. But it was a, it was a nice uh, kind of a muscle car you can see there. That was the one that I had on the thumbnail uh, just because I thought it was pretty cool. It's one of the coolest looking alt modes. I, I want to say uh, second only to that hubcap that was kind of like that, um, like a ZZ Top car. I was looking for that, but I couldn't find it because I wanted to show it off. But uh, anyway, so yeah, he was originally called Big Daddy. Even the, uh, the file name of the picture said Big Daddy, but apparently there's a trademark issue or whatever. So they're calling him Daddy-O, which I gotta say is just as cool. <laughs> so, uh, very cool. You know, so yeah, so there's Daddy-O. His uh, Micro Master partner, I believe this is called the Hot Rod Patrol, is Trip Up, I think. And so there you go. He looks uh, kind of almost like Wind Charger there in the alt mode with the, kind of like the white um, white car with the the little blue flames on the side really kind of makes it that that's what makes me did i say wind charger um the tailgate tailgate it reminds more like tailgate you know there but uh I, I, they're hot rod patrol because if you if you notice between the two of them they both kind of like have that really that raised engine kind of sticking out there um but yeah, he's kind of got the little green accents or whatever i have no knowledge of trip up or whatever uh still looks pretty cool um but i'm definitely excited about big daddy -O. Yeah, we'll just smush them together. We'll call him Big Daddy-O. <laughs> uh, there we go. The Optimus Prime says he likes Chip Up the most. Next up is... This was a kind of a surprise. I had to go kind of look this one up. The, the guy's name is called Ironworks. Apparently they had, uh, a while back in G1, they had MicroMaster bases. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about these a little bit more in a second. But uh, um, there, it was kind of a base that went along with... Um, Iron Tread. This is this is uh, my MicroMaster was in that ten pack from Siege, uh, and uh, this is Iron Tread. And apparently he was associated with a base. Did not turn into a robot in G1, but uh, he he is going to turn into a robot now. It's very reminded me an awful lot of those uh, Micro Machines uh, little sets they had way back in the day. Remember the Micro Machines? They were basically this size except they didn't transform. I had a ton of those darn things. Uh, they're probably still around somewhere. But yeah, they had all those little bases where they kind of fold them up and you can take them out, plug them all together. Very much like what they're, I think, planning on doing with these things and also other stuff. So I don't know if the transforming them into a robot is a way to uh, get around trademarks, copyrights with that, or just the fact that, hey, he's a transformer. These are transformers. we got to give him a robot mode. Either way, looks pretty cool. I like how his, got just, his fist is kind of like a crane hand there. And apparently there's a few different ways you can do him because he does split apart like this, very similar to the weaponizers like Brunt and Cog and Six Gun. So these guys, so this is going to be the kind of deluxe class figure that is going to be replacing those guys. So so instead of weaponizers that you could use to fit out the other bots, they can actually make bases for the MicroMaster guys. So pretty cool man I'm, I'm looking forward to it uh now uh i wonder what other ba uh, bases they, they could be doing so optimus prime that says please be cheap they're gonna be deluxe class so they'll be at that same deluxe class price point 
Uh, so there you go. Next up, I'm so happy to see this guy grapple, and boy, does he look fantastic. He looks almost like that masterpiece figure. Now, this is a render. If you, this is the what this is the one uh, image that I saw that was obvious that it was a render, and not a finished product. Uh, but still, they're usually pretty close to the finished product, and uh, I, I was very happy to see them because it basically practically confirms a rumor that I, we saw a little while ago that Hoist, a new figure for a Hoist, uh, is rumored to be coming out from this line. And seeing Grapple here practically confirms that. And uh, now I don't expect these to be the end of the reveals from the uh, New York Comic Con weekend, which doesn't actually start, in, I think, until tomorrow or later this weekend. I expect we'll probably see a little bit more from there because uh, this is kind of early. Uh, so this is kind of like an early release. I expect to see more. Uh, uh, yeah, I said that. <laughs> but, but yeah, so this grapple looks really cool. It looks very much like the masterpiece, except he does still have the crane thing hang off his back, as he traditionally did, instead of folding up into the chest. Uh, I do like the little claw thing. Uh, so Hasra's kind of getting getting into the, 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 the thing from that one episode where, I forget what the episode was, um, but they actually had hoist and grapple both actually hoist somehow had a crane on it in his back he found it in his backpack and had the little claw thing over clearing rubble and uh so, so yeah and and if you look closely at the tip of grapple I, I can't point at it from here but if you look closely at the tip of grapple's crane he's got the little hook hanging down then he also kind of has a port sticking out there that clearly that's where the uh, the little claw thing is going to be able to uh connect uh for using it for that instead of just off to the side like they have there that's kind of storage that's where he that's where he puts it as he's driving to the job site and then then, then somebody goes out and installs it on there so master builders now it wasn't i don't think it was master builders um master builders is where they actually got you know they were building the solar power tower um but uh, they weren't clearing rubble there were there was something there was something else that where they were actually clearing rubble it, it wasn't the master builders though um Okay, let's move on. And this is the last one, Optimus Prime. Of course, it's an Optimus Prime because they they got to keep putting out Optimus Primes to keep that trademark fresh and alive. So, because the, the, if there's going to be one trademark they don't ever want to lose, it is Optimus Prime. So that's why you always see an Optimus Prime in every line, and usually early in the line too. And man, this is this is looking good. This, so this is going to be sold at, as a leader class figure. And it looks to be similar to how Siege Shockwave was, where the Optimus Prime is going to be kind of Voyager class size. And then he has the trailer along with it to kind of make it be leader class price point, which I thought was kind of funny. If you follow me on Twitter, I made a little joke about that sarcastically. It's like, he's just a Voyager class figure with some accessories being sold at a leader price point, kind of like Shockwave was. Everybody complained about Shockwave, and oh, I'll guarantee you nobody's going to complain about this Optimus Prime. To be fair, this is how Optimus Prime is meant to be, and all the other junk with Shockwave is just that. It's just junk. So, so I, I'm. It, it was totally a joke, not meant to really put it, but I totally get where you're coming from. Although I do like Shockwave. I, I've got all of his stuff basically in like a little green goblin sled that he uh, flies around on. So it's pretty cool. But yeah, this this Optimus Prime looks really good, and. No, this is not just a retool of the Siege figure. I've got the Siege figure right here. Um, you probably can't see it in the small thing, but it, but the, one of the big clues is look at his legs. See how it's kind of br it, the the whole like the little front panel here actually spins with the leg on the new figure. Uh, here it's not. It's this is all one piece, and it actually splits right there. It's not even close to being connected to the to the legs. Uh, there's the uh, the wheels here on on his uh, up under there. That's they're not there on the new figure. The new figure doesn't have any of this junk hanging off. The, that, that's a it's a completely new figure there uh, coming out here in the Earth Rise line. Um, about the only similarities between the Siege Optimus Prime and the Earth Rise Optimus Prime is the fact that it's Optimus Prime and it has the uh, standard truck cab blue legs kind of look or whatever there. So, and, and I gotta tell you. Even if it was a remold of the Siege figure, this is, this figure is so good. I would I would be in on getting this again too, along with the trailer. Speaking of the trailer, 
it works very much like the original G1. I mean, this is practically an updated G1 figure. It's got the up, G1 look. The trailer opens up. It's even got the little uh, uh, repair bay deal going on. And it's not the same image flipped. It, it, it can stand up, uh, but it also can lay down because you can see the second one has kind of got the ramp there. Uh, so, so very, very cool. Very cool. Um, I, I, I am excited about these new figures. Now it'll probably be, uh, next year sometime, uh, maybe early in the year, probably maybe later this year. Cause I think that's what it was about, about this time, uh, of the year we, we saw siege at first and then they started showing up around November, December. So we might start seeing these guys around November, December time frame, early, maybe January next year. Um, but uh, yeah, lo looking forward to this um, Optimus Prime. And yeah, yeah D Daniel Miller saying MP10. A lot of people were are uh, uh, saying if they can't, af of course, they're thinking of MP44 at $450. If they can't afford that, uh, this is an excellent Optimus to have it um at, at probably only about 50 dollars us dollars I'm, i talk about because you know i'm in the us I'm, I'm familiar with those price points so that's a good question william wilkinson that's probably one of the uh uh probably probably the only thing that you uh that we're not going to have i didn't see anything with roller uh sharks he's saying think there's a roller micromaster with this i haven't seen anything about that but there might be a roller micromaster sold separately um so, but no, I didn't see anything about Roller with this. Uh, so, and that puts us back around. Okay, so if you want to see, uh, this is the Iron Tread here a little bit uh, closer. And uh, this guy's pretty funny because to transform him, you practically just stand him up. Um, there, you, you do actually kind of open up the truck and then you can kind of flip it, flip it around. That's the official transformation. For, for, the, for this guy, Iron Tread. Now, considering that you had a MicroMaster and his base now is coming in, I wonder, will they go with other bases? And will that be, will we see an updated version? Some of you guys might know where I'm go, going to. Erector. Will we see an updated Earthrise Erector? And if we do see... A version of this guy will he keep that name that's a that's a that's a good question but but yeah i still have this guy uh for back back from my childhood this is the, the uh you know so he, he's managed to last all the way along so here's the little micromaster dude uh you just little transform him there flip up the head and boom he's done uh more steps almost than this guy but you can see Put, putting the uh, oh yeah his joints are a little loose but if you if you put like the old school micromaster next to the new school micromaster they're practically the same size even if they're out of focus uh, but yeah so so you got that and and he wasn't the only one that was the micromaster with a little base thing um, so so there's definitely some more options but yeah so you just take this and the crane turns into a little gun you flip out the, the little pylons flip up this thing. Make sure I don't break this. That's a little tight. I'm gonna do it. There we go. So so then you just kind of flip that up, and it's kind of got kind of got a little gun there too, and you can actually just stand him here. So so now you got Erector there in his little base mode. Pew pew, bang bang. <laughs> so. Could we see an updated version of this guy? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Um, I have a feeling if if it doesn't have the name Erector, I have a feeling we're going to be able to see because uh, I don't know if you read the Transformers uh, wiki page a lot, tfwiki.net. Uh, apparently, when they first started doing the Hall of Fame uh, to where you know they had like a fan vote where you could do uh, a fan, you know, choose characters to be, be in the Hall of Fame. Erector, I believe, I don't know if it was a write-in or whatever, but he actually almost made it into the Hall of Fame just because of being so obscure and such a silly name and whatever. So um, I think it would be cool to see an updated version of this guy. They actually did a, a third-party company, or a couple of them actually did 
uh, uh, versions of Erector. They took like a huffer and repainted it yellow with a red face or whatever. Um, they obviously couldn't call him Erector, but uh, I, I want to say it was a TFCon exclusive. They did that, so. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm actually uh, looking forward to that. Um, uh, the, the whole new line coming in and, and stuff like that. Um, before we get before we move on and talk, let's let's go ahead. Uh, I want to say it's going to say crack, crystal cracking, but uh, it's really just some power cord chip cracking. So these are the power cord chips I got from last weekend. As I said, I did go to the G metal get the G metal chip. We'll crack the silver one first because we always got to build up to the big payoff. Silver volatile mixture is a pretty nice one. Here's a gold power cord chip. What are we going to get? Gold uh, Vitality, that's pretty nice, pretty nice. Okay, now here comes the G-Metal. Uh, no Tactician, no Tactician, no Tactician, no Tactician. <laughs> See what we get. We get a G-Metal, ooh, Enhanced Ordnance. Now that is a very nice G-Metal power core to have. Very happy with that. Uh, my my chant of no tactician worked uh so yeah now i gotta think about who do i want to put this on hmm but that's gonna be for another time <laughs> sure see no tactician yeah I, I saw some people in the vip chat uh post now they got their with their g metal chip they got a tactician core man i felt i felt so bad for them i'm like ah oh. That, that is the one core that absolutely doesn't need to be anything higher than a bronze. Uh, <laughs> oh, G-Metal Self-Repair. Yeah, that, that one's not as bad as Tactician. Uh, but uh, still, still could have been better. Now, Target Protocol, it's okay. Uh, okay, yeah, go ahead. If you, if you haven't already, sound off in the chat. If you got, what would you get for your G-Metal core? Uh, Soundbot got Volatile Mixture. Wow, that's a nice one to have for your gunners. Um, Viper Cyclonus. Uh, I'm not putting a G Metal Core on my Decepticon side because I don't play as Decepticons. I play as Autobots. They're my main faction. I do put Power Cores on my Decepticons, but I'm not putting any G Metal Cores on, on the Decepticons unless I have so many G Metal Cores on all of my Autobots, which I don't think is ever going to happen. Um, uh, pretty much Tactician, but Defense is Target Protocol. Yeah, a little bit. It's not as bad. Hold a four-star sky warp. Cool, cool. Uh, and, and you know, if I if I was playing as a con, Viper or Cyclonus probably wouldn't put that because Cyclonus Power Glide is the uh, Autobot equivalent, and I don't see myself putting that on Cyclonus. I, I'm thinking. Uh, Good bots for enhanced ordnance would be like Tiger Hawk, Swoop, um, maybe Skydive, Firefly, you know, so some of those uh, some of those bots like that too. Let's see, slow down core for the laser beam, that might be pretty good because uh, I've I've run into that slow down laser uh, beam laser a couple times with and. Uh, it, it's really noticeable if you happen to have Sentius Magnus or Malice and have their ability going and they've got the slow down power core because you know they shoot out the, like the two little pellets or whatever and f full speed you can almost not see it but when they got the slow down power core on it actually changes the speed of the the bullets and you can actually see them a little bit better so it's it's a lot more obvious on, on those guys I mean I still killed the base but uh uh, it's because four star Sentius Magnus is with a amalgamous prime core is practically invincible. Uh, in in mo or at least in zone eleven, which is where I run him. I know you could probably do zone twelve, but I'd rather go for a definite win instead of a uh, uh, losing every so often. That's, you know. Do it on Tiger Hawk. Yeah, I'm not sure who I have on Tiger Hawk. Yeah, that's kind of what I would say to Sharksy. They're, they're mediocre. Not, not not terrible, but not particularly great. Tigerhawk currently has an attack uh, boost, and that's mostly because I did. Uh, he has got a gold attack. Uh, I guess I can show you guys. 
So he's got a gold attack. Uh, I think that's mostly because I didn't have any more enhanced ordnance to put on him. Uh, pretty sure I have enhanced ordnance on my swoop wherever he is. He's up here somewhere. Yeah, so I've got a, got a gold enhanced ordnance there on my swoop. And it's going to be an airbot. Those guys aren't airbots. Let's see, storm clash. She's got a silver one, so that that's a. I don't know if I'd put it put put a G metal on her instead. Um, I didn't mean to hit that. Reflective coating on Firefly. See, like I said, I didn't have that many uh, enhanced ordnance. Black cores, air. Oh look, I, I I totally forgot I have a gold enhanced ordnance that I haven't even put haven't used. So so yeah, I have I don't have that many enhanced ordnance, so getting that getting that G metal one it was a huge, huge win. It almost would have been uh huge huge it would have been huger if I had gotten a, a G metal a volatile mixture, because you can see in the gold gunner power cores it's nothing but flak jackets and silver volatile mixture is the best i got uh the good news is i do have a, a nice gold g1 prowl i got a gold g1 jazz i got a gold g1 hound so some of my gunners they've got they've got some gold cores and those are practically volatile mixtures plus so so that's those are that's pretty cool um, uh, but no honest to goodness straight up gold volatile mixture that, that's def that's definitely the unicorn power core for me right now uh let's see let's see what you guys are saying in the chat uh big bronze room predicting optimal optimist for the next leaderboard <laughs> Uh, Spitfire says he respectfully disagrees and says Dinobot is next, but you guys are definitely leaning towards Beast Wars because both of those guys are. Um, do you use Swoop or Tigerhawk for the outpost? Um, I think I used both of them on it actually. So so yeah, I'm, I I just haven't haven't uh, swapped out power cores. You know, I, I still got Solus Prime. I haven't put on anybody yet. Uh, I just I just keep forgetting because you know I've got power cores on almost everybody and then I just kind of been just go in and play and just forget to manage sometimes um, William Wilkinson who was amalgamous prime uh, it's one of the prime cores uh, is one of the original 13 primes if, uh, if you look for the um, look up the like the original 13 primes or whatever and uh, I forget what amount, I, I can't ever keep straight who who was who. Um, but I'll come back over here. You see, you see, you see this right here. This is the case for the Covenant of Primus book. Uh, so if if you uh, read about that, um, that 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 book actually covers the thirteen primes. It was first from uh, came out. In, it, it was in the, from the aligned continuity, as they talk about it. Transformers Prime uh, talks about it. Um, even the the most recent robots in disguise, War for Cybertron, Fallout Cybertron games, uh, they talk about it. Um, the uh, the comics, the IDW comics, touch on it, uh, even though they're not technically aligned continuity. But but yeah, if you go to tfwiki.net and look up like Amalgamous Prime, you, you'll learn all about it. But basically, what I'm talking about in the game here is it actually comes straight up. Amalgamous Prime is one of the prime cores that is available to you and what this does is while in alt mode it increases all damage including abilities by 11 percent and restores one percent health every half second and um, of course as you level uh, it up uh, the d different things change in fact i believe the uh, percentage of uh yeah the percentage of damage done actually uh changes uh, so, and since Sentius Magnus is in alt mode for a very long time, doing a lot of damage, um, he he increases his health quite a bit. He cause is very strong ability, and he is probably the, this is like the perfect pairing. A strong Sentius Magnus or Malice with Amalgamous Prime Core is probably like the the per, it's like they were made for each other. Um, yeah, and so yeah, you can see I, I have leveled up Solus Prime. 
I just haven't chosen which bot to put it on. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy with the bots I've chosen. So I've got Onyx on Cup, and Onyx uh, boosts the damage of regular attacks and reduces damage taken if you drop below 40% health. Liege Maximo I have on Pipes would also work on Hotspot, except I, the Hotspot I got, I had a G1, a gold G1 core waiting for him, and that I think trumps Liege Maximo. And uh, but any bot that kind of rushes in or whatever, uh, so it, which pipes this one, Leech Maximal works great on him. I've got my Cronus on Springer, which is which works really well because Springer you can send to wherever any other bot is. So if you've got a bot like Drift is actually on the same team with Springer, he if he tends to get out in front of somebody or a Cup, if you bounce him off somewhere, you send Springer over there and he takes healing with him. Um, also have Alchemist Prime, where, where all of your attacks heal you for a percentage of the damage done. I've got that on Star Saber. I'm not entirely sure if I'm still sold on that one. Um, but uh, um, but it's there, and it costs 1.1 million to change your mind. And I'm, I, I'm not that unconvinced yet. And I have Vector Prime on Drift. Um, I have seen a uh, pretty good use cases with Vector Prime on Star Saber and Death Source, where like where you rush them into a strong base, causes a lot of damage, pops out post bots, gets killed instantly, and boom, bounces back to where the rest of the team is. So I, I you know, that seems interesting. Uh, so I might swap that around. But right now, Vector Prime is on Drift, and it has helped quite a bit because you know Drift is one of those bots who jumps out literally in front of the rest of the team and takes a lot of damage. And even though his ability does heal, uh, he still tends to die quickly. And, you know, the, the Vector Prime will actually re return him back about, what was it, like five seconds? Seven seconds to, to the location that health he had seven seconds ago. And uh, so it, it's, it's been working pretty well. So I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with where they are. Um, like I said, I'm not unhappy with Star Saber. I'm just not sure how much it's helping. Because a lot of the time, a lot of the damage that he does, he hasn't lost any health yet. You know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, so I guess there's a little bit of a overview of the prime quarters that I have for right now. So uh, hey, Grand Galvatron, uh, I'm glad you made it. Don't worry about it if you couldn't be here. It's, it's no worries, man. Yeah. Live streams on Thursdays? Not my live streams. The official Transformers Earth Wars live streams are on Thursdays. My live streams are every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on the tra uh, the uh, <laughs> Engineer Hoist uh, uh, channel. There, so. Uh, oh, stressful. Yeah. Hey, man. Yeah, I'm the last one to give you a hard time for not being here on time. I wasn't here on time last week uh, because of a... A uh, stressful situation, which still wasn't even resolved, and I had to call back on Saturday and then again on Monday, and I think it's finally resolved. Although I think they went a little bit overboard, so now. Uh... <laughs> uh, life is fun. Adulting is so fun, isn't it? Uh... Kids, don't be in a rush to get out of school. Enjoy your time in school. It's way better, as bad as you think it is. It's way better just relaxing in school and uh homework is not nearly as bad as <laughs> uh, homework never ends it's just it it's worse <laughs> as an adult um no nah, it's all good it's all good um but yeah stay in school do good in school because uh it, it's important you know that it really is you know i know a lot of people say it oh no seriously it's it, learn and go to school to learn. Don't just go to school and just because you have to. If you if you have to be there, learn something. It, it's it's always good to learn. So Dragon Board saying it's the last year of school. Oh, yeah, it does have to end at some point. So because you got got to get out there. The Dalton gets in the way of the Transformers. Oh, I hear that, Brandon. Alchemist on Snar would be unstoppable. Giving you an idea. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good idea. He does the. Yeah, I might. I, I might think about. I might think consider that. If I get around to it, <laughs> I'm tired of iOS updates, dude. It, iOS updates are a fact of life. Just like any software update, it's going to happen every year. Just kind of like duplicates in crystals and transformers, Earth Wars. Uh, you know, I, 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 I do think it's. Uh, um, I, I do. 
I don't want to say I laugh or get a kick, but every, every now and then it's, it tends to happen on crystal cracking videos, especially a crystal cracking video like the one I just had where I opened up a couple of bundles and end up with just dupe city. Uh, there's usually somebody who I haven't seen before is probably just fed up with the game, sees a crystal cracking video, comes in there and just rants about uh, the duplicates and you know how it's unfair and stuff like that and uh Oktar says Pre preach it it's like and, and you know that's it's kind of the same thing when i see those it's kind of like I, i'm not i usually just leave those alone i'm not gonna i don't agree with it i don't disagree with it i, I just really just don't respond because i'm okay with it there's somebody who's frustrated with the game they're letting out and they're venting some frustrations and and if i if my video can help them get that out great i'm certainly not going to argue with them because they're not wrong uh it's one of those things where the, the only thing i can say is that's how it is man you just got you got to accept it or move on uh and and you know i'm not going to do that because that that's not what the person is they're, they're they're venting just like you know it's kind of any time that you you know when you get frustrated and you're just like ah ah you, you just got to kind of got to you know get it out and then you feel better you know it, it, it so so you know if i could help with that that's fine um you know i i, I did get one comment uh, that was talking to me as if i ran the game uh which uh, again i just uh, it was another one of those kind of a venting kind of a comments and i'm, I'm okay with that you know because it, it happens to everybody you know i get frustrated you get frustrated everybody gets frustrated whether it's about this game or something else you got to get it out because uh, otherwise you build up and then, you know, it's going to come out some way. Might as well just kind of, you know, talk to somebody. And if somebody is talking to you, I make this mistake a lot. When somebody's venting, they're not looking for a solution. You know, let me get on the big screen. When somebody's venting and ranting and stuff, they're not looking for a solution. If they're talking to you, they don't want you to fix their problem. They just want somebody to listen. I am terrible at that because as an engineer, because I've, you know, that's what I train. That's what my degree is in. I'm looking for ways to fix it. And man, I just made so many things worse by hearing, having somebody, you know, vent at me and say, well, did you try this? Well, did you, well, here, here's what that other person is probably thinking and stuff like that. And that is absolutely not what they want to hear. <laughs> so yeah, if you find yourself on the receiving end of somebody venting, especially a friend or whatever, just let them vent and say, that sucks, man. That sucks. Um, so yeah. Hmm. Life tips from Hoist. <laughs> oh, let's see. Garen Galatron says he's gonna get his uh, ninth Prime Core next week thanks to the Energon event. Very cool. You know, I don't even know how close I am. Laser Optimus has a replay. Okay. Well, I guess we could do that. We got a little, we got a little bit of time. Um, I got I gotta go over to the gotta go over to the phone. What was I gonna check before the replay? Oh, Prime Court. I'm 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 a little ways away. Uh, I might get myself at least halfway there, it, it, or or beyond halfway. It'll it'll lighten my load for the next Prime Core event. It, it's weird because Prime Core events always seem to show up on weekends when I'm busy and I can't and I can't really uh, uh, play um, very much. There you go, Starscream Oktar. Yeah, <laughs> hey dupes. Ah. <laughs> Here. <laughs> This is this is what we usually uh, end up seeing. <laughs> that, that, that's most crystal cracking videos right there <laughs> in the chat. <laughs> it's just dupe city. Hoping for no nexus. Yeah, I hear that. Okay, so Laser Optimus has a stream. He says they tried. Oh, it's a victorious defense. Very cool. So I'm gonna have to try to spin my uh, replay value bait and try to narrate the defense okay so here we go mega wave is trying to attack laser optimus from our he's bringing in some pretty nice bots firefly snarl hotspot uh slug inferno grimlock windblade optimus prime is even bringing uh optimus maximus he's coming into the kind of a little uh kill zone over here he's got a couple of uh oh optimus prime sent them over there oh death saurus which is his star saber is popping out because this is a mask base Oh, and look at that. And then 
Mixmaster, oh, Waspinator, which is Tiger Hawk's coming out. Oh, look at that. Oh, and uh, very smartly, the uh, attacker got his bots out of there by popping the combiner. And uh, bringing off the Maximus, he's, he's uh, trying to take out that mortar. But that laser and the missile launcher picked up on him. Waspinator's still stinging him. And uh, Death Source is right there. Oh, he's just soaking up the damage. Uh, meanwhile, when the bots come back, they're still right in the middle of those uh, <laughs> those um, shock towers. And the outpost bots aren't even dead yet. Oh, okay, finally they got uh, Death Source down. Very cool. Both of the missile launchers are still taking it down. Oh, there goes Hotspot. He's trying to get Snarl up there to his base. But then there goes Slug up there. Inferno trying to increase the damage caused by it. Oh, that missile launcher picked up on Firefly. He stands no chance. Because, fire, because air bots really don't... Oh, and that point defense beam. Oh, just picking him off with that point defense beam. And the only one left is Optimus Prime, and he's just got a sliver of life there. He's going to go try to take that out. Oh, look at that missile launcher sniping him from far away. Must have an air attack on that um, laser turret, because otherwise it's because it's not attacking him. Oh, and he's walking away. Yeah, definitely he's got the uh, air, air attack on, the, on those, because they're, they're just totally not shooting him. At this point, he's probably out of... Uh, points. Oh, and he found a stasis mine. <laughs> oh, he's probably going to time out before he can, because then he's going to still bring him back out here and try to get those build bots. Oh, uh, so he's, look, I'm thinking he's going to be timing out. Oh, he's, he's, he's making his way back. One shot from that cannon is probably going to take him out, though. Or that missile launcher. Or the point defense beam, or all at once. This race isn't over well, that was an appropriate caption there, uh, Laser Optimus. They tried. They got pretty close. They got if they had four star prime instead of just a three star prime, they might have got you. Actually, you know the def it showed the defense was uh, lost a medal. That may have been a bad replay. I think you might have actually lost that one, but the replay showed a victory. But we'll call it a victory because that's what we saw in the replay and that's what I narrated. So. Let's see. Nexus on Rust Dust. It says Damon. Been leveling up three star Menasaur. Yeah, you know, I totally forgot about I, my Defensor. I, I should have him at a higher level right now, but I totally forgot he sat there for probably like a week not leveling. Uh, he's at level six on his way to seven right now. But, uh, a Nexus on a four star slug. Um, so the Nexus only works if you, if you actually have that bot with Nexus on it. It, it's, it doesn't have to be in the combiner bot, it, but it has to be on the shuttle that you send in with the combiner. But yes, it would help strengthen Victorion or any other combiner that you happen to use. Um, Alexis Garcia says Nexus is good against enemy combiner beacon bots. Well, that's right. They did add a, a little thing there about the the combiner beacons. We haven't really talked about that that much. Uh, I haven't even built mine yet. Um, while we're talking about Nexus, let's go in there. I, I don't have Nexus yet. Um, it's this one, right? Man, that is some tiny font. Uh, when the bot equipped is in battle, you deal five percent additional damage to to you deal five percent additional damage to your opponent's combiner. There you go. So if a combiner on de pops out on defense, you do extra damage to that combiner from the outpost. Um, if you deploy the equipped bot before your combine before your combiner on attack, so you can't go have them on the shuttle and then drop your combiner first. You have to drop the bot first. Um, then your combiner would deal an additional 5% damage and 31% deduction from raid damage, it says. So that, so, so they have improved it a little bit, uh, especially with the combiner uh, beacon, the, the combiner on defense. So it does affect that. It also helps them uh, using your combiner in raids. So if you, I guess, the, uh, the bot to put on put nexus on would be a bot that you tend to use in raids 
say, Perceptor or Silverbolt. Somebody else that you probably don't use otherwise, but you definitely use in raids. It would probably be a good bot to have Nexus on. Optimus Prime has my current base been defeated all the time, dude. All the time. Uh, I, <laughs> because, you know, it's it's max base, which means it's going to be zone 14, which means the people coming in and visiting me, most of them are coming in with eight five-star bots. And there's nothing you can do against eight five-star bots. Um, some people might say, oh, well, yeah, you could do it. Okay, fine. Maybe there are some things, but... Usually, if somebody's coming in with eight five-star bots or even six or five or something like that, they've spent a fair amount of money and they probably know how to play the game and can get around pretty much any base. Um, but my, my base is definitely not a model to base yours on. It's it's pretty easily defeatable. Uh, usually, what people will do is uh, um, the smart ones will send... Usually, what I how I see it beat is they'll send like Optimus Prime or Megatron. They'll come in, they'll take out Buildbot, they'll take out this Buildbot, they'll get up in here, and then they'll target this bit, this this uh, cannon right here, which is why I have a mine right there. Um, and so they, so they tr try to um, so, so as as they get up here, they'll drop the rest of their team, then they'll rush to right there, which brings the rest of them around the uh, the wall over here. And then once they get, once they, they should get them close enough to, to round over here by the combiner lab, and um, so they've already kind of bypassed most of this stuff. Uh, and then if the mine hasn't got them, or once it's once it's clear or whatever, they'll usually uh, rush up to the headquarters, and then it's a pretty easy victory. So no, this is this is a pretty terrible design, uh, especially since I just now told everybody how to defeat my base. Um, but uh, I, I just honestly haven't spent a lot of time on, on my base design because that, that is the absolute worst place for a mortar. That's a terrible place for an outpost. It's, those are just ones that I got after I built the base already in this and I didn't know where to put them, so I just kind of slapped them out there. Uh, so, <laughs> but, uh, but I do win uh, defenses when somebody comes in who is just barely squeaking into zone 14 and the, and their bots just aren't quite strong enough or so some bots if, if they try to attack and they don't rush around like that if they try to go through the middle uh that, that's usually when i'll win um but even then i've seen i've had bots come straight through the middle absorb all the outpost bots and everything else they've got a super high power death source or like onslaught usually bring in two healers and uh, it's just it, they just walk uh, a jazz or a mix master high level five star jazz with the g1 gold core just boom because my my base is kind of uh it's clustered together so they could take out a, a one whole side of it and so no don't use my base as a model uh i lose all the time <laughs> uh uh, let's see. Oh, okay, um, Big Brown's Rim needs ro Rook and Streetwise for the four star. Yeah. Oh, dude, you're gonna love Rook. Uh, I got him to level fifty, and man, that that uh, decoy just lasts forever. It's nice because it attracts defenses too, so it soaks up the damage, keeps your bots from being targeted, and then then you know which which. Uh, the RC decoy, it does the EMP on one, so it will keep the one defense from attacking your bots, but the Rook defense has that, uh, you know, the... I had the word a minute, a minute ago. This isn't the right word, but like aggro, is, it, it attracts the defenses. Uh, so, so they all basically turn away from your other bots over to that decoy. So it, it stops all the defenses within a certain range from attacking your other bots. And that's very useful. And then the explosion at the end is just extra nice. Um, got a four-star motor master. Very cool. Favorite combiner in game or in general? Yeah, that's, that's cool. Favorite combiner in the game, I got to say, is Volcanicus. Victorian's very cool, too. Um... Haven't used Defensor enough to really have a good uh, uh, reading on him, 
to see if he fit if he I don't I don't see him getting ahead of Volcanicus or but he might Victorian and defense or maybe um, might uh, juries out on that comparison but Optimus Maximus I think is definitely one of the lower ends although it's nice that I don't like him on to attack with because once I do build my combiner outpost uh, I think Optimus Maximus with that, um, if you have a four star Optimus Maximus with that four star ability where he sh where he spits out all the little stunning missiles, I think that's a fantastic and probably the best ability to put in a combiner outpost of all of the of all of the uh, combiners. That four star Optimus Maximus ability is probably the best one to have in your combiner outpost. Hmm. Big Brunsman says, walk that base up the guts. Yeah, and you probably roll right over like everybody else. Uh, one of the guys says, Rook at 58, and he's legit. Yeah. What level is good for Rook's special ability? I'd say as, as, as high as you can, man. Um, my Rook right now is right here. I don't even have power core on him. You know, cause I haven't got around to it. He's been, still been pretty new. I've, I've only got him at level 5 right now. Uh, but level 51, level 5 ability... He's got 65% of your health, so that's 65% of 17,000. So he's got, uh, quick math, almost 10,000. Uh, not quite, but almost 10,000 health on the decoy, which will which will take a long time to destroy. And then what, if once he does get destroyed, he explodes and deals 1,718 damage in a large area. That's a lot of damage for a decoy. And uh, so if I take him up another level, uh, it d the percentage of health doesn't help, uh, but but or it doesn't change, but the damage goes from 1718 to 1841. That's a huge amount of damage. Yeah, I could probably do that right now. <laughs> there you go. Level six. So level seven would take you to 1963. Can you see? So it actually goes up a lot when you level up the uh, um, level, level up the ability. So yeah, pretty pretty new bot. He is way up there uh, already in the uh, power rankings, and he doesn't even have a power core on him like all the other bots around him. Even Impactor too. Look, he's got 19, he's 1915, and uh, he doesn't even have a power core. He's level 51 and Optimus Prime so, so in Optimus Prime had well I guess he, Impactor has a higher ability because I don't even know why I took Prime to level 4 ability you know Optimus Prime's one ability you actually don't want to level up too high because the higher level he goes he does damage to the thing he's targeting and if he destroys the target the the prime rush the uh, the orders that the call for your other bots once once he destroys that target it stops so you actually don't want him to destroy whatever you're targeting so that, that's why upgrading megatron or prime's ability is actually kind of bad hmm oh look we're we're, we're about at the time man we're, we're just having a good old chat here oh still missing four star mix master for devastator Mixmaster was one of the first four stars I got on my Decepticon account. He was the first four star Constructicon for sure. But at the same time, on my Autobot account, Jazz took me forever to get Jazz. So it's just crazy how things work out. Eight seems like a sweet spot. Yeah. Ninja Squirrel says he has an episode with a live base design rebuild. Oh, you want me to have an episode with the live base design rebuild? Oh, man. Yeah. I, I, I thought about it. But, you, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm no expert on base design. And I just don't even know where to begin. Uh, there's, there's definitely uh, better people out there. Big Bronze Rib, I'm sure, has probably got a good uh, base. Um, go check out Sunstreaker Waza. He's got a pretty decent base. Al Alpha Prime. Um... Because those guys are battling in Prime League, you know, in, in the Cybertron League, you know, the, the, the top war leagues or whatever. 
we, we don't really war that much, which is why I haven't needed to really um, change my base. So. Big Bronze Rooms, uh, you would take your Liege Maximo off of Hotspot for... Oh, for Rook? Yeah, that might be a pretty good idea. You know, actually, pro now that I think about it, since the uh, the decoy actually, the health of the decoy is based on the health of Rook, Vitality is probably the best core for Rook. Um, I've probably said that before. Because Vitality will increase the health of Rook, which then in turn would increase the health of the decoy. Or some, I don't know, is there some other power core which will increase the uh, uh, damage of an ability? Not for a tank or a special style bot. For uh, gunners and air bots it definitely is. Yeah, base redesign is extreme exercise in patience. Yeah, and I just <laughs> I just don't have the time to be patient right now. A live, a live base design of a max level HQ-16 base, that's like set aside a Saturday. <laughs> you know, well, one thing I, I am happy about, and, and it's one of the reasons why I haven't done it, is if I recall, they do have the remove all button. Where if I, I don't know if anybody else has done that, but I, I haven't yet. But I mean, if you hit the remove all, in, I believe it actually just takes everything off, and then you can uh, um, just put it back out instead of having to move it here. You know, kind of move, 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 and then try to re. re I just had no, I had no desire to redesign the base by having to move things to the side and then move it back and then just try to, you know, do three or four interim arrangements while I try to build it up. But using that remove all and then just place it back when you're ready, that, that seems like it would be helpful. But I just, I just don't have any ideas in for how to build the base, whatever. Yeah, and I still have those couple of obstacles on the side, honestly, just because I like how they look. Instead of being like a big open field, yeah, I'm talking about these uh, talk, talking about these little uh, rocks over here on this side, and and over here. I just never put anything in my base there, and I and I like I like how it just how it looks. I know it, it doesn't stop anybody, but I just kind of like to look at how it looks instead of just being a big open field. So, tank can never go wrong with rejuvenate. Yes, this is true. So, uh, before we get out of here, let's talk, let's talk uh, one last uh, last cyan and say a G1 hotspot hotspot core is good. And then he's asking, so do you think grapple will be coming soon? Now that's an interesting question um, because we didn't touch upon it when we were talking about those toys, but uh, you know we got grapple coming out in the new Earthrise line, um, and of course we've got Inferno already in the game of easy skin to convert um, Inferno into Grapple. And uh, we already talked about that rumor that Hoist is going to be coming out in the Earthrise line. It's a rumor right now. Somebody went into some uh, barcodes or something in a retailer store and saw the Hoist name. And, and those, are us those usually turn out to be right. And the fact that we've seen Grapple makes it even more, more likely. Uh, so if there's go if there's go if hoist is going to end up in the game at any time, this will be the time uh, for him to show up in in the game. Uh, because yeah, I even brought this guy here to talk about that, and I forgot about it until until we're actually in overtime. But yeah, this is the last hoist figure we got from uh, Hasbro. Uh, this is the generations hoist from uh, oh I don't know five years ago. I've got one of the. Uh, uh, third-party add-on kits there. I'm pretty sure I did a review of this guy somewhere back in the archives of my channel. Um, but yeah, this is the last one uh, that Hasbro put out. And so I can see why they wouldn't uh, necessarily put Hoist in to try to uh, advertise this guy. Because the game came out when Combiner Wars was at its peak. That's why a lot of the bots look like the Combiner Wars ones. And um, But the most recent Hoist figure that I got, just real quick before we go... 
is uh, this is the Magic Square uh, crane figure, they call it. It's hoisted. I, I actually had to send it back because the first one I got was missing this wheel right here. Um, but uh, TF Source is real good about it. I took some pictures. I, I sent, sent in the email and said, hey, yeah, this is the figure you got me is missing the wheel. And they're like, okay, yeah, here, here's the uh, label. Put, put it, throw it in a box, send it back to us. We'll send you a new one. And uh, there he is. Pretty cool. Uh, the only problem with this is I was avoiding the Magic Square line. But now I've got a Magic Square figure because this is the only Legend Scale hoist that came out from third party. And I like it, which means I'm probably going to end up with more Magic Square stuff. What can you do? Life of a collector, I guess. Oh, right. If Grapple came in, who do you think it would be his Decepticon counterpart? I don't know, man. My brain's tired. Maybe we'll talk about it another time. Um, I'd, I'd have to think about... Uh, I'd have to think about uh, what kind of ability that he'd want to do. Maybe we'll talk about it... Uh, maybe we'll talk about it next week. I already kind of laid out an idea for Hoist. You know, I, you know, when I was over there in London last year, I, I, I gave him an idea. Uh, yeah, of course, that was when Josh was in charge. I don't know if he left notes or if he took them with him or whatever. And, of course, Hasbro has a lot to say. I mean, they can go say, yeah, we really want to bring in these. And Hasbro can be like, nah. Nah. So, anyway. All right, guys. I do appreciate everybody uh, being here and uh, coming coming out uh, every Wednesday like you do. And just hanging out, talking Transformers. It's a lot of times. Uh, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of good times. Uh, so, nice, nice uh, little event. Here uh, we saw some new figures, uh, or renders at least, uh, coming out. And so pay attention to the Transformers social media channels. Uh, and I'm not just talking about the official ones. Pay attention to like the uh, Facebook groups, the Twitters, and stuff like that. Because I have a feeling there's going to be more stuff coming out over the next few days. Talking about the, uh, the more Earthrise figures. I am... Um, Got my fingers crossed that we're going to be seeing Hoist this weekend. Um, be, and uh, if we do, you know we'll be talking about it next week. All right, all right guys. Uh, like I said, thanks for watching. If it's your first time here and you haven't yet, go ahead and hit, hit that subscribe button. I'm Engineer Hoist. Keep rolling, my friends. And uh, we'll see you next time.